Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our base building series here in Unity. We are working on our game, we've got a lot of things developed so far, but one of the things that is outstanding is a couple of things aren't yet being saved to the file. One is jobs, and we're still waiting for that to, um, for us to redesign the job queue system, which is hopefully going to come relatively soon. But the other thing are the rooms. Now, right now, when we load a map, we... For every piece of furniture that gets placed down, normally when we build it, it does a flood fill through the rooms right now. We have it right now when we load a map, it disables that flood fill for each piece of furniture until everything has been laid out. Then it runs flood fills in a semi-strategic way to limit um, how many calls we have to make. But we could avoid that entirely if the rooms were saved to the file. Now, if the only thing that we had to save is the concept of whether a room was sealed or not, we might be tempted to keep the flood fill up there, even though it means the load times are slightly longer, just because it could adapt to changing circumstances better, especially now as we develop, we're still developing the save file. But what we need to save is the current status of the oxygen in these rooms and other variables going forward, because as is, if I were to save now, Right, if I save and then load, this would restart at zero. Oh, actually, it gives us an error right away. Really? Load? It does give us an error right away. Front attractions 152. Why is that? Come on. Why don't you actually... Oh, you're going to do that again where you're not loading things? Let me close Mono Develop and try to double-click on it again. Oh, is it the null furniture exception doesn't generate a reference? It could be. It depends on exactly where in the code it gets called. So we're getting our error at 152 in here. What is this? Oh, because furniture, tile, room, get gas amount. Is the furniture, the furniture tile, is the room not being set correctly on a load? If this is equal to null, then debug.log error. Why are we in a null room? Question mark. And return. I think that's what's going on there, which is clearly wrong. And that is exactly what's going on. How come? Hold on. Didn't we get that working? Room index one, two. Why is this one null? Well, I mean, it's room index zero, which is outside. For some reason, our flood fill is not working correctly on this room and is reporting it as being um, part of the outdoors, which is clearly wrong. If I go and put a door right here, that should cause it to refresh, and indeed it does, and now suddenly starts to work. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I'm going to go through and, and figure out that, that code right now. It might come up to bite us again in the butt later on, but it's clearly part of where we read in our tiles, or rather, where we read in our furniture over here. We are we're reading furniture, we're placing a piece of furniture, we're saying false to flood filling at that time, and then afterwards we're looping through each piece of furniture and saying to initiate a flood fill there. Hmm. How odd that it wouldn't work. How very odd that it wouldn't work. So there's, there's clearly some logic problem in our flood fill somewhere. That being said, what we're going to do is we're going to work on room saving and loading in this particular episode, which means we won't need to do this. Right? Because we won't have to do a flood fill because we're going to be loading in our room information um, from a file. So presumably everything will be okay unless we change the flood fill behavior in some way. So actually, I guess, yeah, let me go and comment this out for now. And say, um, we don't need to do a flood fill on load because we're getting room info from the saved file. All right, so that's good. So what order do we want to do this in? So here's our read XML. We read in the tiles, then the furniture, then the characters. I don't 
strictly think it makes a difference as long as the rooms get read in after the tiles themselves. Because, in a way, like, the rooms are defined by being enclosed by walls, which are furniture. So, in a sense, conceptually, it doesn't make sense for the rooms to exist before the furniture is in place. But, because of the way the load order works, it doesn't actually matter, because even, you know, we can define the rooms, and then the furniture, like, outlines it afterwards. It's ultimately going to be exactly the same. But I suppose, conceptually, it makes the most sense if we load the rooms after the furniture, but it really doesn't make any difference whatsoever, except I think that the, um, um, the tiles should probably be created. So we're going to do something like that, and then break, and what we're going to do is we're going to grab, say, read furniture, paste, just to get the basic structure in place. This is going to be for rooms. We'll debug. Go to a descendant called room. And we're going to do some sort of reading in here that we'll figure out in a moment. Okay, so I'll, I guess what I'll do is I'll go and um, comment this block out. Because I don't know if any of that's going to apply. And we'll definitely do something like this for rooms. So we've got this. And then what we should also put in is the dummy code for the writing of the XML. Is it not called write? I've got read. Yeah, it is called write. Where can I see it? Oh, oh, right, because we don't have all the other sub functions. That's so I was looking for more stuff. All right, that's fine. So we'll write out the furniture, and we have to make sure the order is exactly the same. So then we will write out the rooms and room. And so for each room R in, whoops rooms, which is include writing to the outside. I don't know if writing the outside room makes much in the way of sense, but I don't know. We'll see. And then call write XML on room, which clearly does not exist yet. So now what we're going to do is I'll grab the, uh, the version from the furniture as a sample for us. There we go. Write and read. Oh yeah, and the XML schema all has to be there. It's been a while since we've uh, done the file loading and saving. So I'm just going to paste this in as a copy, as a, as a guide. And also, we know that what we're really doing is we're implementing a certain interface. We're implementing this interface, so the room itself will need to implement this. And to implement that interface, we need those three functions. We need the XML schema uh, function call, which does nothing. And then we need to write some stuff out. And, oh, I think we need a using. Yes, we do. I don't know if we need the system part of it. But we need the rest for that to work. All right, so what kind of data do we have to write out for our room? Well, we need to know what tiles belong to the room, right? Because we have a list of tiles that we have to, um, when we read, we have to load those all in. So I guess we have to write them all out. And I think what we're going to do is very much like we do in the world here, where we uh, start an element and then loop within it. We're going to have a loop like that. And then we'll have to output um, all the atmospheric gases information. So actually, the for each over here is going to look very much like the room bit with the parameters. We have an atmospheric gases, a set of keys. We're going to write a parameter where the name is the name of the key, and then the value is is that. And then the same thing is going to happen for the load over here. We're going to read the name, the value, and then atmospheric gases is going to get set there. So that's going to be the same. So it's this top bit here. So write out gas info. Read gas info. This is the top bit where we say write out a list of all tiles belonging to this room. Alternatively, alternatively, what if instead of doing this, 
we, in our world, we write out the rooms first. And then when we're writing the tiles, just write out the room ID as part of the tile info. That's probably a lot better because it feels like getting a big list of X, Y coordinates is actually going to be super awkward here and lead to a bigger save file. I think the save file will ultimately be smaller if in the tile writing info, we put it there. So I guess that's going to be fine. So yeah, write out, read in. So we have to make sure that the room info yeah, because when we read in the tiles, the rooms already have to exist. So we actually have to do the rooms first. So I was actually saying the other way around, which would have been true with my initial writing, but that's not the case here. Um, this actually doesn't matter because I'm going to I'm going to do it this way so that sort of logically we can see the order that things are in. But this is a switch statement. It actually doesn't matter what order the switch statement is in. We're going to read in the rooms. which is going to create the rooms. So we're going to say room R is equal to new room, which doesn't need anything. It needs a world, which is this. Actually, rooms don't need to know what world they're in anymore. We're going to get rid of that because instead we've got our singleton kind of pattern. So we can say world dot current dot get outside room. That was the only reason we'd cache that reference is to do that. Okay, good. So we create a new room. Um, in our rooms, we add R. And then we say R dot read XML. And we pass it the reader. So that's in that. And then in our right, We add in rooms, we write out the XML from that, and we end elements. So when we load everything, our rooms should be in the same order that they were written in. And that means they should have exactly the same IDs. So now when our tiles write out info, we're also going to put out the room ID. Um, now we have a reference to our room. But how do we get our room ID? Does the world? It doesn't, but it should. So we should be able to do something like room.id to find out what that is. Um, and these can shift over time. It's a dynamic kind of thing. So I'm actually going to make a public um, int ID, which is just a getter. And what it's doing is going world.current.getRoomID. And we pass it a room in. So there's going to be a couple of different ways to get it, but that's OK. And then in our world, because we've got a get outside room. So I want a public int room R, and then we can return rooms dot um, index of R. That's all this is doing. There we go. So now we can get a room ID like that. So we're going to write out the room ID. And then when we read the XML, the rooms have already been created. So we need to make sure. So we're reading in the type. X and Y have already been read processed. So we don't need to do anything like that. Uh, but the room ID, so our room is going to be set to world.current.getRoom from ID. And we are going to read in that number, uh, which is going to be an int. Just like this. And we're getting the attribute called room ID. And we're doing that. So this function doesn't exist yet, but that's fine. Public int get room from ID int i. 
and we're going to return rooms i. Now, conceivably, this could end up being out of bounds. We'll deal with that if we start to develop anything like that. So that's all saved. That's that. So our room should get acquired or um, assigned at this point. So it's important to note that in our world reader, right, read XML or specifically the furniture, we're no longer doing any kind of flood fill. We're When we're placing the furniture, when we're reading in the furniture from the file, we are telling the place furniture function not to do a flood fill. So the only way rooms can possibly exist anymore is if they get read in. So what we're going to have to do is check for syntax errors. Oh, return. And yet we don't have to specify a world anymore when we create a room. You have invalid arguments. Oh, um, dot to string. Cannot convert into to room. Wait, is room? Not convert into room. World current get room from ID. Oh! It's supposed to return a room, not an integer. There we go. And we're still creating some rooms over here. New room. Don't have to specify the world. And another one over here. New room. We don't have to specify the world anymore. All right. Hit play. We have an empty world. We're going to pathfind test with just puts things down for us. We are going to, I'm going to save object reference, not set the instance of object. Right, some of our places have a null. So some of our things belong to the outside room, but all of the wall bits, the wall bits have no room whatsoever that index minus one. So how am I going to represent that? I guess I could just, we could write out a minus one. Um, if room is equal to null, then we're going to return the string minus one. Otherwise, we'll return the actual string. And over here, we'll grab int uh, room ID. Actually, hold on. We can just do this, like this. And get room from ID, we'll have a special one, like if... We don't have to throw an error. If it's an invalid ID, we can just return null, right? So if i is less than zero, or zero, there we go, or oh, my hand just keeps going in the wrong place, or uh, i is greater than rooms dot count minus one, so either way it'd be out of bounds, we return null. Don't actually throw an error, it's just in there. We could also do a try catch block over here, but I think that's going to be okay. So now let's try this again. Pathfinding test. Save. No errors. Um, I'll, I'll start with a fresh run just to double check that. Load. Okay, it came in with no errors and it is correctly identifying everywhere as outside and the walls is minus one, which is correct. And by doing a load, then our little hack in there that adds material is in place. We're going to go and build up the walls over here, over here, and door everything up. Which takes a little bit of time, but that's okay. We'll let it run, make sure this goes okay. Hey, it's another nice time to check some things. Actually, I don't think we'll have enough steel to finish this up. I could have just done the quick little door production as well. Luckily, the mining drone is very fast right now. It's still set to generate 20 units per tick, same as before, which is not what it's going to be going forward, but for debugging, it's going to make things a hell of a lot handier. So you're going to go finish this up. The mining drone construction is going to be last thing in the queue, so actually if it runs out of steel plates, what's going to happen is it's going to go and build the doors, then it'll build the mining drone, then it'll work the mining drone. I think the next thing we're going to do is add more than one character, which should just work, but could also identify some conflicts in our job queuing system.
I would still like it if their character maybe looked around to pick up more stuff rather than deliver it right away, which he's not doing right now. He grabbed the four. It would have been nice if he tries to grab the last one as well. All right, now I should go and do all the doors. Oh, oh, right, you'll bring a partial amount of material over there. Sure, that's fine. That's probably okay. Although, there's something to be said. If, like, there's literally not enough material for something, maybe we're going to want our characters not picking up the job. Like, they'll do a scan, they'll find out there's literally not enough stuff kicking around the map for me to do anything with it, so I'm not going to bother. Mm-hmm. And actually, I don't really need the hack anymore for the material. Since our mining drone station is currently free to build and builds insanely fast, I could remove that little hack, and I think I will. I got that in there. You're going to go back and work over there, which is fine. I'm going to save this map, right, where we've got room one... Uh... How come you're two and three? Shouldn't you be one and two? What? Somewhere along the way, a room didn't get um, removed correctly. So that's that's an issue in our flood fill, I would say. There should not be room index two and three. These should be one and two. How and when did that happen? And I'm not convinced that this is going to save properly as a result of that. Let me kill this. One thing I'm going to do is before we test that is I'm going to go and read XML. I'm going to remove this debugging code over here, which is what's whenever we loaded a map, it would spawn some metal. We don't need that anymore. Hit play. I'm going to load. It would not surprise me if we got some sort of error because of the room IDs. No, I guess not. There's there's legitimately a room one somewhere that the game is quite happy with. And I don't know why I would do that. I do this, which is very quick. This will split these two rooms in two. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's something when um, our room splitting code is leaving in the references to the old rooms. That's all that's happening. So there's a room one that still exists and a room three that still exists, each one of which should have zero tiles in them, but they're not actually being removed from our array. So that's going to be a minor little thing to correct. I will take a look to see if I can find it quite quickly here. I'm not sure that I can. Um, do flood fill. Must be a new piece of furniture, potentially dividing new rooms. But the old room over here... So why isn't this being run? We should get here. Nope, this should not, this bit should not be called. And I'm worrying that we're calling the wrong side of things here. So if I load this, it doesn't matter because we're not doing flood fills. And I didn't save in the doors before, so that's okay. If I do this, we should not see no in the log. And we don't. Okay, so it's correctly running this part. I mean, I guess I put a, put a yes. Debug.log, yes. Debug.log, delete old room. So we're not getting this error. Load, doors, go. Yeah, yes, and delete old rooms is running. But it's not deleting the old room. Room 3 is still out there. What the hell? Let me just do another test here, which is going to be nice and fast. Split this up this way. What I should do is have it output all the room counts. Okay, so room index 0 outside, room index 1. Great stuff. Then, if I split this in half, I should end up with 1 and 2. And I do. Now I should end up with one, two, three. And I do. One, two, 
three, four. Okay, that. What? Anyway, save that. Load this. One, two, three, four. And then split you in half. Why the hell were we getting that weird behavior before? Everything seems to be working fine now. Something had clearly gotten flagged oddly. One, two, three, five, six. Yeah, where's four? That's it. Room IDs do change all the time. That is perfectly okay. Yes, delete old room, delete old room. Whoops. Zero, zero, everything is zero. What? I should have some sort of debugging mode overlay um, that shows me the number of the room IDs on each tile. Alternatively, I could go into debug mode right now and find out something about room four. Because when we delete the room, we're removing it from the list. And we did not try to delete the outside room, so it should be trying to remove the room from the room list. And the IDs, remember the IDs is not something we actually set anywhere. The ID is simply its index in the position. Maybe, okay, hold on. Is it possible that it's our tooltip code? That's off. Uh, get room index number, which we get by calling this directly. We shouldn't have to do that anymore. Instead, we should be able to say t.room.id, which should be exactly the same thing as before. Now, if I can't get it, if this doesn't change anything, we're going to have to put a cut in here anyway, just on the basis of, you know, just time. So we do this, then I did this, and I split that. So we correctly have a room of one over here. In a moment, this should become room index two, probably one and two. One, two, three, which is good. Oh, wait, are we getting errors? Oh, that's on the mouse over code. Oh, um, it's where it's null. How come I wasn't getting that before? Still, that that's fine. I can I can fix that. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So I mean, again, the order in the index can get reshuffled, but they should all be accounted for. One, two, th three, four, five. Okay. I think that's all it was. I think it was a tooltip error a mismatch because of the way that the room IDs were getting reported or something weird like that. And yeah, we're getting the errors on mouse over because what we want to do is say, um, how were we doing it before? Where it wasn't giving us odd behavior. Oh, because index of was returning minus one if it wasn't in the list. Okay, so we'll have to just manually check this. Um, String room ID equals other B is equal to no. And then if if T dot room not equals no or here and a like that plus room ID. There we go. So now it shouldn't actually throw an error when we mouse over a piece of furniture anymore, or a wall rather. And it doesn't. It says room index NA. Room index that, and then build the doors, and we should be okay. All right, so I don't think we actually had any bugs. Oh, let me let me load up our, oh, I saved that. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, that's good. And the NA is over here. Glorious. I think we're working okay. Let's go and divide this into two and make sure that all our rooms are accounted for. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, again. There's an extra room. There might, okay. 
I don't think it's happening when we just go the new world, but I think it is happening on the load. I think the load... I know what's going on. I know what's going on. It's because when we set up a world, when we set up a world, we create the outside room over here. And then when we save, so there's no bug in my code. Well, there's bug in my, my loading code. When we save, we are looping through each room and writing it out. And then when we load, we, lo we loop through each room and recreate them. But the problem is we are saving the outside room. And then when we load, it calls setup world, which again creates an outside room. Then we load them all in. So we're getting two copies of the outside room put in there, which is why we're ending up with the extra stuff. The logic is still working, but we're creating an extra room every time. And if we kept going, save, load, save, load, save, load, then we would actually be generating a bunch of outsides. Let's actually confirm that. So it's not my room division code. So yeah, here, one, two, three, four. That's fine, but there's an, I think there's a fifth room that we're not noticing. If I save this and load this, one, two, three, four, again, but let me do this a few more times. Save, load, save, load, save, load. Now, if I go and build a door over here and divide this, we should get a really a big jump. It'll look like there's many missing rooms. One, yeah, two, three, nine, ten. It's because there's a bunch of extra copies of this outside room. Okay. So what's the solution? I mean, there's a couple of really easy things. We don't save the outside room. We could do that. That might be the best move. Um, alternatively, set up world could maybe not create an outside room. You can see I had the question mark here as to whether we should do it or not. I don't know if we need to save any info for outside because it'll never have any gases or anything. I think for now, the best thing to do will be to not write out the outside. So for our write XML, we are going to skip the outside room. So if um, get outside room, is equal to R, then what we're gonna do is hit continue. Continue. We skip the outside room. Alternatively, should setup world be changed to not create one? Question mark? I don't know. For now, this should fix our weird mystery problem. So I'm gonna hit play. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to load, but I can go and do a pathfinding test over here. We're going to do the, the doors again over here, there, there, the, oops. Well, that's fine. That won't actually hurt anything. I don't think. We'll do that. Let that just play out a little bit longer. That actually did seal in this room, which makes sense. So now we should have room index one and two, and we do. And then if I save this, load, save, load, save, load, save, load again. We do that that many times, confirm room index one and two, and then I'm gonna build doors over here to split this up. We should end up with one, two, three. One, yep, yeah, two and three. Perfect, okay, no extra doors happening anymore. Let me go and clean up the debug information here. I thought I was going crazy with my, I was like, oh, if we have to debug the fricking um, flood fill code, I will not be particularly happy. But it looks like we're in a pretty good state with saving rooms. Saving jobs is still gonna be a fairly bit more complicated and still something we have to wait until we reprogram the job queue. And I keep trying to put it off because it would be nice at this point to just work on more cool stuff. And so I don't know what our next video will be. I don't know if it'll be adding more types of furniture, probably checking to see that multiple characters works okay would be a nice idea. Um, yeah. And we really don't have to worry about optimizing the job queue until our maps really are starting to get more complex. And then, you know, planning out jobs for more efficiency will become more important. So we might hold off on that and work on more cool stuff. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.
Thank you everyone who pledged on Patreon in April and who are supporting these videos from May through to early June. And to these mic check level supporters, we've got Wes Oldenboiving, Craig Mortel, Neil Balaki Milner, Speedy Savant, Valiant Cakeveen, Aaron Toivson, Marius Field Vold, Jan Torre Vell, uh, Julian Auger Lafon, Steven Steger, Michael McClintock, Kale the Quick, Drazion, Bite Rash, adjective Jason Yanty and to absolutely everyone who watches and shares and favorites and subscribe these videos uh, subscribes to this videos appreciate you all thank you very so much and I'll see you next time